Yes, a bunch of Adelaide students will be jealous because a school in New South Wales, and it's one of the bigger ones, 900 students, wow. have implemented a four-day school week. Four-day school so, week? Are you kidding? <laughs> one of the first people to do it for seniors. So this is from year 10 and above. But yes, it's not a case of, oh, you get a few frees and you can mismatch and take a day off. It's everyone in the school gets a day off on a Monday, I believe. Yeah, So right. extra long weekend, they're the first people to do it. Oh, that's great. Look, we should implement that into the workplace too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it in all facets of life, I reckon. Four-day work week. I mean, whoever came up with the five-day work week is insane. Just, yeah. It would have just been one teacher at the end of their tether at this school, I reckon. <laughs> hey, guys, how about just four days? No one's going to complain. Yeah, the teachers would be loving it. Exactly Sick. right. And Batman is getting his own star in the Hollywood uh the Pop, star, you know, the, the Walk Hall of, of Fame, Fame thing. Yeah. Walk of Fame, yeah. Walk of Fame. What, he's getting a star? Yeah, first fictional Someone character. Someone that played Batman yeah. or no, Batman just himself? Batman. <laughs> But it's meant to be an homage to, you know, Adam West and Bob Kane, all these old Batmans and things like that. But I wonder who will dress... Because, you know, when they do the Walk of Fame start, the celebrity always shows up and does a few pictures. Well, usually they have people all dressed up, you know, as Batman or movie movie characters around there anyway on the Hollywood Boulevard. So who gets to be the Batman that takes a picture (laughs) with the star? I don't know. I assume you'd get, like, Ben Affleck or Robert Pattinson, someone who's currently playing or just finished playing Batman. But uh, you want to call dibs on that. So he's the first fictional character to get a star. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. There yep, you go. There you go. And Good also, on Batman. Yeah, he's doing great. <laughs> Saving the city. <laughs> Gotham is doing pretty well. And this one's pretty interesting from uh, all the people that are going over to Sydney for the Port Sydney game. Flights have mm. actually dropped about $330 less compared to immediately after the game. So obviously, when Port won, the tickets to Sydney skyrocketed. They, if you um, want to get your tickets now, though, $330 less, they are a bit cheaper. After the game, it was half an hour after that game had finished. I believe the, the flights had tripled mm. in price over yep. to Sydney. So that's great that they've dropped the price because it is just, it's kind of crap that mm. they do that, isn't yep. it? It's so expensive. Uh, it was the so... same for all the Hawthorne fans that came over. I know that the flights into Adelaide and even all the prices for a lot of hotels just skyrocketed, skyrocketed. for that weekend. Yeah, so there's a bunch of Flights. The cheapest ones will get you there in time for the first siren, so you'll be in a bit of a mad rush, oh. but you can get there pretty cheap. <laughs> and of course, if you are driving, it is about 15 hours, so stay safe on the roads I and believe take there turns is, in your driving. I believe there is a port bus as well that yeah, people great can stuff. take for a lot of the fans. We want to talk about these Gen Alpha slang words. Mm. I know we talk about it a bit, but we we talk about it and we rag on it. Right, yep. you know things like their words like skibbity and newing and sigma. <laughs> yes, obviously. So these are the new words. These are what the kids are saying. You know, we went to the Sandfall the other week and had a look at the game there. A kid actually did say skibbity, and I thought, wow, they actually do say that. Yeah, I thought it was just you know rumor. Yeah, but I think I think we're too quick to judge on these kids, right? We we take we take the Mickey out of them for using these slang words, but maybe we're too quick to judge because. I've been doing some research on older slang words Mm. from all sorts of different decades. And since it's Wineback Wednesday, I want to test your slang knowledge. And you can play along wherever you're listening, you know, in your car or at the work site, in the office. I'm going to give you a slang word and you tell me what decade you think it's from. And we can also laugh about how nonsensical these slang words have always been. It doesn't matter what decade they're from. They just just keep getting weirder and weirder. Exactly right. For it to become a slang word at the time, it would have to be a little bit controversial. So let's get into it. All right. The first one is apple sauce. Apple sauce. This means something is nonsense or foolish. Applesauce sounds like it would be a little bit old school, and we're guessing the decades, are we? Just the decade. The 70s. The 70s? Are you locking that in? I'm locking 70s. No. It's not 70s. 1920s. 1920s? <laughs> yeah. It's that old. Yeah, people in the 1920s would say, that's, that's applesauce. Apple <laughs> Next up, this is a classic one. This is mm. one of my favourite ones I've ever heard. Gag me with a spoon. This means uh, this is something you're disgusted by. Yeah, it sounds freaky. Uh, sounds it's like something you're grossed be... out by. You're disgusted by this action. Yeah. Gag me with I'm a gonna spoon. I'm going to go 40s. 80s. 80s. I was 1980s. I was literally actually going to say 80s. I'm not even joking. I thought well, gave, didn't. Me, gave me with a spoon <laughs> just sounds really old school and like you shouldn't be saying it. It doesn't sound like it's something we should be broadcasting. No. <laughs> sounds like, yes, yeah, a 1940s radio there. All right, how about this one? Skinny, meaning the truth with no fluff. So, like, give me the skinny. Oh, okay. I haven't heard it, but I think it's on the modern side. 
90s. 1970s. 70s. 70s. Yeah, right. Give me the skinny, man. Yeah. Give me the skinny. I don't mind that, to be fair. <laughs> All right. Finally, we'll wrap things up with this one. This is probably the strangest one I've seen. Milkshake duck. This what does is, that mean? Essentially, it just means he cancelled. It was cancelled before cancelled came along. So someone that's rose to fame and everyone likes them, you do a bit of digging on their past mm. and they turn out they're not a good person. They're a milkshake duck. Right, okay. Uh, let's hit it with the 90s again. I'm going back. 2010s. 2010s. Yeah, more Who's recent. saying that? I've <laughs> never heard it. It was a phenomenon. <laughs> We've recently been invited to yet another wedding. It really is wedding season at the moment. Mm. And we were with my folks when the invite came. So we got on the topic of wedding tapes. Yeah. Um, and I feel like they aren't as common as they used to be, right? You know, everyone used to have a videographer at their weddings and they'd have the tape of their wedding. But nowadays I feel like people only really get a photographer. Sure. I think there are a lot of... There are still videographers around, but obviously it's quite different. It's a bit more high tech. You might see a drone flying about the place and yeah. then it just gets uploaded on Facebook. You know, <laughs> gone are the days of having an old school... VHS or a DVD. Yes, but uh, as we're talking about the wedding tapes, mum and dad, they really dropped a bombshell on us. And uh, they were talking about how they got my mum's brother to film the wedding for them. And upon receiving the VHS tape back of their wedding, it's all smooth sailing. Mm. And then it gets to their first dance. Yep. And suddenly you hear... (laughs) They're like, what the hell's going on? They start to see fighter pilots (laughs) (laughs) come through the wedding table. Like, what the hell is this? I don't remember them. Somehow, my uncle managed to tape over their wedding tape with Top Gun. (laughs) (laughs) I guess it must have been on TV, and he's like, oh, gee, I better tape this. He's grabbed the first VHS he's seen, and he's taped over the wrong tape. He's taped over my mum and dad's wedding tape. And then it cuts back to them dancing. So it's during their first dance mm, that yep. this happens. And then it cuts back to them dancing. <laughs> and then it goes back and you hear... You know what? Screw <laughs> having a wedding band doing covers of old rock classics. You've got Top Gun, the soundtrack in there. <laughs> and what about... At least it wasn't the first kiss. Just cuts to them and it's like, I pronounce you Maverick and Goose. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't remember that. Yeah. So just throughout their whole first dance, it's them dancing, then fighter pilots, then them dancing, then Tom Cruise's face, then them dancing. Celebrity wedding. Yeah. There's a lot of high clientele <laughs> in that wedding. I can't believe I got an air show for their <laughs> wedding. No, my dad... Dad reckons it's the coolest wedding tape, though. He loves it. But it is such Mom a dad was thing. Like, what the hell have you done? You've ruined our wedding tape. It would just be such a dad thing, right, to think, oh, you know what, I don't mind cutting out a bit of the boring bits, you know, the cake cutting for some action <laughs> fighter, fighter jets. I mean... I won't lie. I think it sounds kind of cool. The it's fact a, that it cuts a, back in and out. It's a new way. It's a new way to do it for sure. <laughs> but we want to. We want to wind back the clock. We're talking about the VHS tapes right now. What did you tape over? I mean, because it doesn't have to be a wedding. Obviously, that is a huge sentimental one that is going to piss off a lot of people if you tape over it. But what about you know baby showers or births and things like that? I'm sure there's been heaps of people that have accidentally taped over one of those. It could even be like your favourite movie. You've sure. taped over with something else. You've taped over Top Gun with a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> What's this boring <laughs> wedding crap? <laughs> Got this text in here. I taped over my kid's christening with an episode of M.A.S.H. Of all the TV shows you've See, done, Mash. That's what I mean. What if it's something like? What if it's one of those real grim episodes of Mash that you know, it's just not what you want to associate with your wedding video. No, absolutely not. I uh, love this one here. Um, my wife and her best friend did their first modelling on a Channel Nine morning show, and I accidentally taped over them with a series of cops. From Jack and Tim. <laughs> You'd be in the doghouse for a while with that one, wouldn't you? I reckon, I reckon, yeah, look, these are all just guy shows as well. Why is it Top Gun and Cops? It's always the bloke taping over. Because they're always the idiots that tape over. <laughs> I wouldn't trust myself yeah. near a VHS, that's for sure. I hey, love this one here as well. I've taped over my son's birth back in the 90s. Oh, my no. Wife, my wife wasn't too phased, though. It was her shouting at the midwife anyway from Don. <laughs> I guess there'd be some pretty compromising shots in a birthing video that yeah. maybe you wouldn't want to see the They're light like, of day. Maybe it's for the best. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, we got Belle from St. Clair on the line. Belle, good morning. 
What did you tape Hello, over? Hello, good morning. I um, actually had baby video um, in uh, in the video player so years ago, and the cat got onto the couch and started playing with the remote and ended up taping over the baby videos with Bold and the Beautiful. Whoa. So it wasn't even worth it. <laughs> a cra- just a crap soap opera taking over this sentimental moment. Yeah, I have to say my mum was not happy about it at all. <laughs> That's probably the worst way to go. That's terrible. <laughs> no good. Blokes are often a bit hard done by on the dating apps. They feel, you know, Tinder, Hinge, all of those. You put up certain pictures. Remember when guys were getting a lot of flack for putting up pictures of them fishing? And then <laughs> they were pretty harshly told by the girls of the world uh, that, look, that's not okay. That's a bit, you know... Nothing it's wrong with fishing. They're, they're, well, that's well, we're guys, so we don't see anything wrong with fishing. Fishing's but apparently, good fun, and you know what? You take anyone out fishing, now, they'll be like, "Nah, you know what? It is good fun." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have to give it a try. But apparently, you know, girls hated the fishing pics. It was a bit cringe at the time. But there is a new dating trend on all the apps that is causing girls to be a little bit grossed out by the guys again. Well, what could it possibly be? Well, guys are writing six 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 on their profile. Oh, profiles. I see. <laughs> Satan! No, no, not quite. <laughs> not that, what do you mean, not? No? No Satanism, no. 666 oh. is a new trend, right, that all the blokes are doing. They're not worshipping the devil. What it means is that they are, one, six foot tall. Six foot tall. <laughs> okay. They have six-pack abs. <laughs> okay. And they also have a six-figure salary. They sound worse than Satanists. Yeah. <laughs> I would... I would rather date a devout Satanist yeah, than I one feel of like these they'd blokes. have a bit more personality. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> what do you, what so, do you yeah, talk about? Your, six, your height, your abs, and your six-figure salary. What else is there to talk about, right? So this a bit is, cringe. This is taking uh, the dating scene by storm. And I guess, you know, guys, girls, you probably see more and more people out there doing it, the 666 routine, just to flash off the fact that, yeah, you've got six-pack money and you've got a bit of height to you. I mean, I feel like this this is a great PSA for all, for all the girls on the dating apps right now, be careful what you wish for because I'm mm. sure they'd all rather the fishing pics Yeah, now. I was going to say, a, <laughs> sat- a satanist fisherman. <laughs> Adelaide, let's wind back the clock. The new quiz with a bit of a spin. Wheelie Wine Back Wednesday with Tom and Callum on Fresh 92.7. That's right, it's Wheelie Wine Back Wednesday, our favourite quiz show, The Way It Works. We spin a big wheel, whatever decade it lands on, you have to answer three questions. If you get all three correct, you can win what, Callum? We are giving away more tickets to Palace Nova Cinema. Your chance to see whatever movie you like down at the East End, in Prospect, whatever you like, and there's heaps out to see right now. That's it. There are a bunch of great movies at the moment. Alien Romulus, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Yes, we went and saw that the other night. Great stuff. So definitely want to get your hands on it. And of course, while Steph is on the work day at the moment, we've got our producer Erin on the wheel spinning duties. Welcome, Erin. Good morning, boys. How are you going? How's the wheel spinning going? Are you enjoying filling in? G- loving it. Um, this week I've done a lot of practice, so hopefully <laughs> um, I'm ready to go. What kind of things have you been spinning in practice for the wheel spin? <laughs> I don't know if it's appropriate to go to air. <laughs> that, that might have to be another late night show that we uh, that we create here, boys. Late night <laughs> wheelie wine back Wednesday special. <laughs> Tune in for it. Hey, uh, all right. Well, let's get straight into it this morning. Uh, we'll, we'll spin the wheel, whatever decade it lands on. We'll give you the first question. If you land on that decade as well, you've already got one question answered for you for your chance to win a double pass down to Palace Nova, East End or Prospect locations. Let's do it. All right, Aaron, spin, spin that, that wheel. wheel. It is going. All right, it is good going. spin. What have we landed on? We have the 1990s. All right, the 1990s. Callum, yes. which 90s toy craze involved collecting and trading small stuffed animals, each with a unique unique name and tag, and was considered a significant collector's item? I personally had a lot of these. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Beanie Kids. Correct, Amundo. It is the Beanie Kids. There How you go. Good. If you land on the nineties, one question has already been answered for you. Do people still collect them? I don't think they're. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Did, I haven't seen them. Aaron, do you know if they? Do people still collect Beanie Kids? 
I'm not entirely sure, but did they bring out new ones? Right, a new batch. Yeah, I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe. We'll do some research oh. and get back to you on that one, Adelaide. We got Katort in Mobbury Couture. North. Katort, how are you going, mate? Hey, you lads? Yeah, very, very well. Good. Now, mate, how, how experienced are you with your decades? Do you think you have this in the uh, bag? Yeah, I reckon if it's the 90s, I'm pretty uh, good with that, but yeah. Good stuff. Now, Couture, are you a big movie fan? Do you want these tickets to be yours? Yeah, definitely. I love the movies. Great All stuff. Right. Well, best of luck, mate. We'll show Aaron here, our resident wheel spinner for this morning. We'll do our best to get you on the 90s, but let's spin that, that wheel. wheel. All right, big spin, big spin. What have we got? We have 2010. All right, okay. Ooh. So you're going in a bit blank here, Kutu. You're going to have three new questions. I'll kick you off. Stereo Sonic was a premier EDM music festival that featured top artists like Tiesto, Calvin Harris, David Guetta. Do you know which year marked its final event in Adelaide? Oh, I used to go to all those back in the day. Yep, so uh, the last Stereo Sonic in Adelaide. Say 2014. Oh, oh. Katut. so close. But, mate, stay on the line because we might be coming back to you. We're going to move on to Renee in Salisbury Park. Renee, do you know what year was, was the last 20, uh, was the last Stereos? Yes, I think it was 2016. Correct. Good stuff. Good stuff, yeah. Renee. <laughs> You're moving on to the next question now. All right. Okay. Now, who released the track Don't You Worry, Child in 2012? Oh. Uh, Swedish House Mafia? Correct. Hey, fresh, <laughs> fresh favourite there, Renee. Had that one in the bag. Yeah, now, hopefully this absolutely. One, hopefully this one's easy as well. you got four options to choose from on this one. Name one of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's kids. You just need to name one, Just Renee. one of them. Uh, Northwest? She's, She's got it! it. Renee, <laughs> maybe tickets are all yours. Jeez, three for three. <laughs> Renee, you are an expert of the 2010s. Would that be your, your decade you would have picked? Oh, oh, yeah, probably. Maybe 2000s, yeah. Awesome stuff. Great stuff. You and a mate get to go along to a movie of your choosing at Palace Nova Cinemas. You can go to the Prospect or the East End location right next to the Fresh Studios here. No worries. Thank you. Good stuff, Renee. Renee. Thanks for getting involved. Fully. I can't hear what you're saying. Fully. You're going to have to speak up. Fully. Hoodie? Cookie? Missouri? What are you saying? (laughs) It's footy. Mouthful of Sandful with Tom and Callum on Fresh 92.7. Jeez, Tom, it's the game on everyone's tongue. Mouthful of sample. And we're not sick of it yet. <laughs> I mean, despite the choking hazards of, you know, what comes with this game, pretty much we stuff our mouth with marshmallows and we try and say a word, a footy-related word, and you, Fresh Fam, if you can guess what we're saying behind all the mumbling, you get tickets to the sample Grand Final. That's it. This Sunday, the 22nd of September, you and a mate get to come into the exclusive Fresh 92.7 box where we will be putting on food, drinks, we have DJs spending tunes and the best seats in the house. It's great, isn't it? If you don't know what we're talking about, it's right by the scoreboard, by the hill. It's a big box there, so you've got complete leverage over everyone. You're seeing the game from a big height. And yeah, like you said, drinks, food and everything, all sorts for free. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we have run out of marshmallows still. Mm. We, we forgot to go buy some yesterday. But our, our, our kind producer, Aaron, and resident wheel spinner, Aaron, yes. has gone out and gotten us some lollies. So I'm going to I'm gonna be stuffing my face full of lollies today. All right, go on. So yeah, I mean, it's better... <laughs> It's better than the marshmallows. It's better than yesterday trying to do the rice crackers. We're trying to find substitutes, but Tom is stuffing his face right now. He's got a camera on him too. There is no escape in this. It's not a great look. It is a bit embarrassing. No one looks great stuffing their face with lollies. Um, I think I think we've got it. Um, All right, let's do the word. Fuck <laughs> song. I reckon we're going to have to go again. All right, we're already getting calls. If you know what that is, should we do one more time? All right, you got it there, (laughs) Fresh Fam. Call up if you want these grand final tickets. What is Tom saying? We're going to Clarence Park. We got John on the line. G'day, John. How you going, mate? Hi, lads. How are you? Very good. Not bad. Now, John, do you have a sample team? Who do you barrack for? 
I do. It's loosely Glenelg. I have for over 20 years, but well, I do like go. Glenelg. The Bays are playing. But it doesn't and... bother me. <laughs> they are against Norwood. It doesn't bother me if they lose, but I'll be happy for them if they win. Ah, oh, good stuff. And are you came for the drinks and the music? Yeah, I like a bit of music and a few drinks. Great yeah. stuff. All right, John, what, do you, what word do you reckon I said? It sounds like Tom said check side. Check side. Mm. Check side, as in the type of kick. Okay. John, we can let you know, check side is correct. Woo! You've done it, John. You and a mate are coming into the sample. Uh, Fresh 92.7 exclusive box for the grand final. Lovely. Thank good, you very much. Good stuff, John, and good luck to Glenelg out there. Who will you be bringing with Thank you, John? Thank you very much. Uh, a friend of mine. Um, I'm not sure which one yet, but um, <laughs> I will let you know. All right, good stuff. <laughs> see good you on there, you, John. mate. We'll yeah. see you this Sunday. Thanks, lads. All the best. Thank you, Fresh, Fresh 92.7. No worries. Cheers for getting involved, mate.